Hello, welcome to downtown. I'm your host, Robbie Haig. Thank you for being here. Today, I am talking with Amy Naples, who is the Executive Director of the Chamber of Commerce in Plymouth. Welcome. Thank you, Robbie. It's Thanks so good to see you. Me. Thank you. Great to see you. Good. Wonderful. I, there's, I've got uh, so many questions in my mind all at one time. Awesome. Tell me a little about you. Sure. So my name is Amy Naples. I've been the executive director for the Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce. I've been with the chamber 13 years in total. Wow. And just over a year now as executive director. So I have worked in almost every position at the chamber. But I live in Plymouth. I was born and raised in Plymouth. And really? The, I did not know that yes, about you, Miss Amy. Yes, and oh. um, my entire family still lives in Plymouth as well. So my roots are certainly Plymouth, and I have so much love for the community. Yes. So I um, went to Plymouth High School, um, went to UMass Dartmouth, um, studied elementary education, and decided not to pursue that career path. Um, started at the chamber, as I said, 13 years ago. I live in Plymouth still with my husband, Danny, and our two dogs, which are rescue dogs, one from Louisiana and the other from Aruba. Oh, really? Yes, yeah, so I am a crazy dog person, oh. and I love, love, love animals. Very good. Yes. And 13 years at the chamber. Yes. Wow. Wow is right. Time wow. flies when you're having fun. I'm so, I was so pleased when you finally decided to take this <laughs> executive directorship. Thank you. Yeah. I thought it was time. Um, I had a wonderful mentor for many, many years, Dennis Hanks, and he yeah. certainly helped me get to the point where I am. And Kevin O'Reilly, our previous executive director, who was there for just a couple of years, mm -hmm. was an excellent mentor as well. So it was a great opportunity. I have the best staff, Bob Nolet, our communications director, Megan Doherty, our membership director, Amy Clark, our bookkeeper, and newly to our team is Michelle Massesso, our administrative coordinator. And the team is all very seasoned and over six years each. Excellent. And we are a dynamite team. So yes, you are a dynamite team. I couldn't do team. it without them, yeah. that is for sure. Talk to us about uh, just what the uh, Chamber of Commerce does sure. for the community. You know, so just an overview. Right, so we are actually a regional chamber, so we cover nine communities on the Lower South Shore from Plymouth all the way down to the Cape. And what we do is honestly help business flourish. That is our main purpose. We provide networking opportunities, educational opportunities. We get behind legislative stances, whatever it may be, we are there to support our local business community. Mm -hmm. In addition, we also do help our community. We offer a number of community events for quite, quite a number. <laughs> uh, actually, yes, quite a number of community events, yeah. probably more um, than most chambers may, but it's a huge component to our mission and what mm -hmm. we do and our love for the community. So. That's the quick overview of the chamber, mm -hmm. but we have about 780 members. Wow. Yes, it is, and growing. And growing, very and growing. good. And the, um, well, most recently, the uh, uh, Halloween on Main Street. Yes, which is a huge event. Yes. So this year was our sixth year, and it has grown tremendously in those six years. This year, we decided to close off a portion of the street, really to provide safety for the public. And we sure. have such smaller trick-or-treaters come now, and families feel much more safe. And it's such a great opportunity for people to go out downtown and see what stores and restaurants are there. The downtown absolutely gets involved, and we wouldn't be able to do it without their mm -hmm. commitment and um, really just the entire community getting involved. Could you guesstimate how many kids, were, how many people? So we kind of base our numbers on candy. Um, oh, so very good. we did survey the businesses to see kind of what they thought for an estimate and 
I'm guessing between three and four thousand. Wow. It's really tough to tell. We've asked the police to also give us a count of what they thought, but a lot of businesses said they bought about three thousand pieces of candy and they ran out. Wow. It's and amazing. it is a long span, it's from two to six. So we're thinking about tightening up the time. Oh okay. so that businesses aren't running out of candy mm -hmm. and we have those later trick-or-treaters disappointed. And the community talks about it, what a wonderful day it is. Yes. And it seems to be that Halloween is over at six o'clock because they say, you know, the, the kids don't come out after that. Yes, I was surprised to hear that myself. Um, I live in a neighborhood and we had about two trick-or-treaters, which in previous years we've had a lot more. Yeah. And my neighbor had told me they go to a large development where there's usually hundreds of kids and it has and certainly slowed down. So I think this yeah. is kind of the event that the parents take them to and how can you blame them? It's fantastic. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. So that uh, um, other things that you do, other... So other programs. community events? Yes, community events. We have our Downtown Plymouth Waterfront Festival held in August, mm -hmm. the weekend before Labor Day. That is one of our largest events. It's a one-day festival. Previously, many years ago, it was two days, but um, it shuts down the entire town. Basically, we get about 40,000 attendees in that one day. We have 250 exhibitors, crafters, artisans, we have entertainment for the entire family, children's activities. We also have a motorhead cruise and car show. So we kind of capture all audiences certainly at do. that. And that's growing too, I believe, and isn't it? And that's growing. And thankfully, we always have a beautiful weather. And yes. it's a banner day for all. Sure. And many people plan their vacation travel around that. And we see a number of people come in for that event. So it's certainly grown. So it is about our 36th year of holding that. So it's really? been many, many years. Oh my. And it's the second largest um, event in Plymouth, believe it or not, after the Thanksgiving Day Parade. Amazing. Yes. We also have another festival called Bark in the Park for our dog <laughs> lovers like myself. And Very that's good. held in May. And that's really just a day to celebrate our pets. It's a great opportunity for those business um, nonprofits and dog related vendors to showcase their items and it's a great day it's held at Nelson Park and the dogs that come in are on their best behavior <laughs> and they are so excited we have agility tests we have a canine demonstration from the police department and it's just a fun day oh, for for good. pets and families yes. wow. so the chamber is the central part of Plymouth. We think so. I think so too. We think I so. agree with you. We work hard to, for it to yes. be. Yes. And do you have volunteers at the chamber? We sure do. Robbie, you are <laughs> probably our top volunteer, aren't you? Oh, I Robbie love Robbie is at everything and oh. we're so lucky to have her. Um, we do have volunteers and it's on kind of a need basis in mm -hmm. regards to our special events. We are a smaller staff and we do have a number large-scaled events like the Waterfront Festival where we, we really need help from volunteers selling ducks for our Ducky Dash. Oh, that is, that is so fun. It's so fun and the kids yeah. are so excited to watch their ducks yeah. race and to purchase the duck. Um, and then our business expo each year that you volunteer at and just mm -hmm. helping us you know, giving us a hand. We have a great team of ambassadors yes. who are local businesses that have volunteered their time to assist us with growing our membership and with community events and any of our events. So they are also wonderful, mm -hmm. but we wouldn't be able to do it without. Right. Well, how could you take care of all those people with, right. with the with five small? People. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, I, I smile anytime I think about the chamber because thank you're you. just you're just such nice people. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank yeah. you. But thank you, you so much. Yeah. It, it's very good. So what's coming up? So what do we have coming up? So we're winding into our slower season, which isn't ever really slow. No. <laughs> no, but we are gearing up for next year's events. And as you know, most of those large scale events take 
about a year of planning. Sure. So we will be um, gearing up. But we do have, um, we are coming to an end for our Plymouth Lobster Crawl. That was a two year yes. art exhibit that we had put on. Mm -hmm. The first of its kind in Plymouth and many other communities have done so. We had about 30 lobsters sprinkled throughout Plymouth. So it was a great wayfinding opportunity to get people from the waterfront to downtown to other parts of town. And we worked with the schools and many field trips were on that. Mm -hmm. Many businesses did um, employee outings around the Lobster Crawl. So it was a much bigger success than we ever even imagined. Mm -hmm. We created a map so that people could follow and take pictures. We have a hashtag, Plymouth Lobster Crawl, and um, the social media aspect of that has been wonderful. So mm -hmm. that, sadly, is coming to an end for us after Thanksgiving. And the staff and I will be taking down those lobsters. So part of the program was you could either purchase or lease the lobster. So we have about half purchased and half leased. And we will have in January an auction for the leased lobster. Uh -huh. So people have an opportunity to purchase a lobster Very to have at their home or their business. And the other half will probably keep them at their businesses. Talk a little bit about uh, how the lobsters came to be. Sure. They were just plain, ordinary old lobsters. They were. So they were just plain white lobsters. They actually came from, manufactured in Nebraska from Icon Poly. We worked with them on creating the mold and they were delivered in May, two years ago. Um, and basically they came as a blank slate. Mm -hmm. We commissioned artists to get involved. It was a great opportunity for our businesses to work with the artists and they mm -hmm. loved every aspect of that. So businesses sponsored the lobster so, and then they were paired up with an artist of their choice. We had a day where the artists um, had all of their work out and the sponsors came in and selected them based on what they were thinking they would like to do with their lobster. Very good. All are very unique and different. They no are, two are the same. No. They are beautiful. Something they that are. the chamber is very proud of. A project we kind of were unsure of and we weren't entirely certain of how successful it would be and how proud the community was of it. Oh. And it's so nice to see art out in the community. Mm -hmm. So artists did such a beautiful job doing that. They, they do. took about a month or so to create them and work with the businesses on exactly what designs they would have. And then we had Cape Auto Body clear coat them so that they are just like an automobile. Oh. And they can withhold all elements Excellent. As they've been stay, stayed out for. They've been out for they've that. They've been out. They've been through hurricanes they've and been some through no, everything. tough wow. nor'easters. So, yeah. Yes, those are some tough lobsters. And the uh, artists that worked on them, the, the ideas they came up with were amazing. Absolutely we amazing. We couldn't have dreamt the, of anything more beautiful. Right. Like uh, the. I'll pick on just one, for instance, the dentists with, with, with so many hidden toothbrushes yes. throughout the lobster. It is, and a How big creative. Toothbrush and it had rhinestones yeah. and so creative. Really. They were so creative that somebody took one. Yes, yeah. a couple. Um, we had a couple of thefts. Yeah. But overall, in a project of that scale, it wasn't what we had thought. Yeah. People really do protect them and yes. it's interesting, um, we are co the, it's a project that needs constant upkeep and repairs and things and making sure the bolts and everything are secured. Right. So we are constantly checking that and anytime we are, people are always come up to us, what are you doing? <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> so the community has certainly taken um, account for that Excellent. and they and they've really admired them. Now uh, is the chamber also responsible for the Adirondack chairs? We are not but we are involved with the Plymouth Bay Cultural District which is responsible and those Very are good. beautiful they as well. Are. It's so nice to see the public art yeah. throughout town and 
in the waterfront. It's nice when the community is proud and, uh, and you see it, you know. Absolutely. It, yeah, the, the chairs are lovely. They're beautiful. Uh, the lobsters are lovely. They so, are. Yeah. Yes, so I where guess. are you going to have, where are you going to hold this uh, oh, auction? Sure. Yeah. It is to be determined. We are in okay. the planning stages. We okay. do have a venue picked out that we think would be lovely. We're already getting phone calls from people from the Boston area, from out of town, wow. interested in attending and purchasing a lobster oh, because they came to visit them and would like one of their own. And many people good. have told me they've been eyeing certain ones to oh, very good. purchase and put at, by their pools or in their front yards. Wow. Yeah. So that's in the planning stages. Um, we should have that firmed up soon and more to report on that hopefully soon. But we have a great location in Plymouth picked out. Well, I thought it was very clever too that you made a contest of people taking pictures on their vacation. And yes. Getting back to you and yes. yeah. We tried to plan a number of events around that. We had a Meet the Artist event. We cre also created a lobster crawl puzzle. Um, a local vendor, Dashing Dan, had approached us and came up with a beautiful idea for a puzzle. And that's been very successful. And you can purchase those at the chamber. They make great yeah. gifts. Yeah. And we had t-shirts. Wow. So we and there was a book? And written. there was a book, yes, yeah. by Claudine Reed, who did the sales actually for us Very with good. the businesses. And it's a, a beautiful children's book. Yeah. So you're, you're ingenious. You're always coming up with something new and different. Thank you. And we're hoping to have something new and different again. We Excellent. did just receive approval from the town that we will have our second exhibit coming out in spring of next year. Very good. Yes. So is uh, this with 2020 in mind? Yes, it is. We have, we are starting to put together a committee comprised of different organizations in town to come up with the next theme, so to good. speak, sculpture that will be yeah. around town. You certainly do incorporate the whole town. We really try to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's everyone's yeah. town. It's everyone's town, mm -hmm. sure. Absolutely. It's everyone's hometown. For everyone's sure. hometown, exactly. <laughs> so um, you're dealing with people from uh, the 400th yes, we anniversary. Yes, very closely with the um, Plymouth 400th Inc. organization. Michelle Pecorero is the executive director. Mm -hmm. And they we're actually getting very were, excited. About they actually were in your building for a while. They were, before yes. Before getting their own yes. little space. They have a great space downtown. It's a great opportunity for um, foot traffic, and they have a lot of visitors, and this is such a large community event, celebration, commemoration, right. that they really needed a storefront. They were on the third floor of our offices, right. but they are such a great organization. They're working so hard for all of the events. And Have you seen their new sign? I have not. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, I haven't. It's, in the, uh, it's going to remain at the post office. That's amazing. That's great. Yeah. They have, that's such a beautiful office space. The way is. the post office has been restored is yeah. so nice. It's really uh, the other crown jewel of downtown. Absolutely. And another thing that uh, you're very involved with is small business. That's right. So our chamber is comprised of mainly small businesses. and. I would say over 60% are small businesses. And when I say that, I would say under 15 employees or, or less. Wow. So our main mission and purpose is usually to help those small businesses, the mom and pop shops. Yeah. And we have Small Business Saturday coming up on November 24th. And of course we encourage people to shop small, dine local, every day but this is a celebration that the SBA and American Express has each year and it's after Black Friday of course those are kind of Black Friday is usually the big box stores and Saturday is the celebration of small businesses and they are truly truly what makes up our communities and our economy to be honest and, and you also have the First Saturday of the month. Yes. 
we have an um, organization under the Chamber of Commerce called First Saturday, mm -hmm. and that is comprised of downtown merchants who gather to provide events the first Saturday of each month. And that's just really to stimulate business downtown, get people downtown. So special events would be, they've had a chili crawl or entertainment at the different shops or mm -hmm. Memorial Hall. And there's so much <laughs> activity downtown. Right. It's so vibrant. And, and there's music throughout the streets, yes. on the street, and in the building, so. Exactly. It's, it's exciting. It is exciting. Yeah. So we, yes, we work with small businesses day in and day yeah. out, yes. And we really, truly appreciate the feedback and input from those small businesses and our planning and our assistance. Yeah, and it's amazing, The uh, I think we have probably five new restaurants. Downtown. Just recently. I know it, it's wow. amazing. It is, and we'll I never go hungry. <laughs> I know we won't. And I believe that many other area communities come to Plymouth to eat and yes. dine. And it really is kind of a destination now yeah. for nightlife. We have great arts and entertainment with the Spire, Concerts at Memorial Hall, the mm -hmm. Phil. Yeah. It's perfect for them to have dinner and go see mm -hmm. a show. Plymouth is a jewel. It, it really is. It truly and is. it is so vibrant. And there's so much life downtown. Mm -hmm. yeah. And many years ago, it wasn't like that. That's right. And we, we, uh, the influx of people coming to come living in Plymouth now. Exactly. You know? Condos are going up everywhere. All over. And a younger generation is looking to live here. Mm -hmm. And we do have an aging population, but it seems as if that's starting to change yeah. since um, some of the developments like 80 Make Peace um, down in South Plymouth is really marketing to families and mm -hmm. the younger families. And of course, we can't forget the Pine Hills. We can't forget the Pine Hills, <laughs> exactly. It's, so, yeah. it's beautiful. It is. It's a, its own little community with yeah. shopping and dining And they're still as well. building there also. Exactly, and that wow. continues to grow. Yeah. So our we're very housing fortunate. market is absolutely. Yeah. We're very I think fortunate. we're very fortunate. I do too. Yeah, I love to be uh, in the Plymouth area. I Downtown know. Plymouth has grown like crazy in the past few years. It sure has. Mm -hmm. And you're right downtown. Oh, just so love you it. get to see what's going on mm -hmm. all the time. And all you have to do is walk outside your door. I know. That's it's the best wonderful. part, isn't it's it? It's wonderful. The waterfront is beautiful. They've done a great deal of work around the waterfront this past summer, also. They have. DCR, who um, owns the property where Plymouth Rock's located, Pilgrim Memorial State Park, invested millions of dollars improvements of that. And that included Coles Hill, Pilgrim Memorial State Park. They're now working on the restrooms. And this is all wow. in preparation for the Plymouth 400th, mm -hmm. which is amazing that the state has also invested in that. Yes. And it looks absolutely beautiful. It does. It does. I love the lights on, the, the new lights in town. The lights on the, the lights lit. on the lights. <laughs> they look beautiful. They're gorgeous, yeah. Don't they? Just driving through yeah. town, it really adds so much character. Mm -hmm. I agree. And of course, coming up is the uh, Thanksgiving Day Parade. That's right. Which is, like you said, the largest. The absolute largest. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how many people come in for that, but it is such an amazing yeah. event and celebration. Yes. And being America's hometown, we should have the largest Absolutely. Thanksgiving celebration. Absolutely. So that organization is certainly gearing up for a very busy weekend ahead. Yes. With lots of activities, and they have so much to offer for everyone. Yeah. And I do believe it's the largest um, parade in the state. It is. It's the yeah. second largest in the country yes. after second. the Macy's Very Day good. Parade. Yeah. Wow. Right? Yes. So That's something a... else that we can be proud of. Yeah. 
and of course it's gearing up for the uh, the Christmas and yes yeah I actually right saw around some, the corner uh, I actually saw some snowflakes today I did too. Well, not so ready for that. <laughs> no, no, and not the hol so. holiday season is upon us. Yeah. So and we you were you were saying that you're you're gearing down a little. You're not going to be gearing down for too much. No, because time. we do have our annual meeting coming up in January as well um, as our kickoff to the year, which we're very excited about because we are coming up. Um, 2019 is the 70th anniversary of the chamber. So this really? is going to be a very exciting oh, wow. year at the Chamber, and we have a number of marketing initiatives and special events planned around the celebration, kind of hitting those milestones that the Chamber has created through the 70 years. So wow. it's an amazing time. Yeah. So the annual meeting is our official kickoff to our 70th very anniversary. Good. And we have just confirmed our keynote speaker, Anthony Everett from Chronicle. And he oh, will be a great addition how this nice. year. Something unique and different. Um, yeah. Something outside the box that we've never really had for a keynote speaker. And he's going to speak to businesses how they can get featured on Chronicle and the importance of small businesses and media. Wow, very good. And yes. of course, most of us watch Chronicle. Yes. It's, uh, it's really uh, an interesting, great show that highlights little small businesses mm -hmm. around Massachusetts. Little nooks and crannies yes, also. Exactly. Yeah. Who doesn't enjoy it? Who so. doesn't, right. Right. And at our annual meeting, we also award our Business Person of the Year, which is a very prestigious very award, good. and our Ambassador of the Year, someone who has stepped up and really helped out. Wow. So very it's good. a great celebration. Yeah. And of course, our election of our Board of Directors. Mm -hmm. Oh, the... How many people do you have on the board? So we have 23 board members. The chairman of our board is Peter Brown, owner of Tiny and Sons Glass, and mm -hmm. he will be continuing. It's a two-year chairmanship, oh, okay. so he will be continuing as chair. Very good. And the official slate of officers has not yet been determined. Okay, very good. Well, it's been wonderful talking with you, Amy. Thank you so much, uh, Robbie. So it, it's just, you know, there's, there's so much that the Chamber does that it's, it's mind-boggling. <laughs> Thank you. And it's good to get you sitting across the table from me and telling the people out there what you do. Thank you for the opportunity uh, to do so. Uh, it's my pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. My pleasure. And thank you out there for being with us. This is your host, Robbie Haig, saying, I would like to see you again real soon. Thank you for being here. <laughs>